G'day fellas, today we're going to be talking about hotkeys. Hotkeys are an incredibly important part of your gameplay and if you're wanting to get the competitive edge, you're going to be need to be using them. Now, there's different types of hotkeys, so we're going to be going over all of them. Uh, the most common ones that you're going to be using are your uh, unit grouping hotkeys. Uh, but what we might do first, we're just going to jump into the hotkey menu. I'm just going to run through a few hotkeys that it's important uh, that you change or that you at least know what they do. So we're just going to start off with the key binding. So the, you've got two options here. You've got Legacy and Default. So Legacy is what was used in the original Age of Empires 3. And you've got Default, which is what's used in the, uh, the current version. So I played with Legacy for many years. I started playing Age of Empires 3 back in 2006. I have played on and off since about 2010, and I've stuck with the legacy hotkeys uh, essentially all my life. Then when Definitive Edition came out, I switched over to default. And the reason why I switched over to default is because it just makes sense. So I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, about why default makes sense and why if you're still using legacy, I encourage you to switch to default. Uh, but I'll be talking about that uh, in a little bit. So. Hotkeys that you're going to need to change. The very first is attack move. So I think at the moment it's it's it, the default is something like uh, Shift F12, something ridiculous. Just change it to Z. You're going to want to turn on allow conflicts so that you can include uh, Z to be assigned to more than one thing. Because you're going to have, let's say, you've got Z assigned uh, as attack move for your skirmisher, but Z is also going to be used as your arsenal uh, for a for a settler. So you're just going to allow conflicts. That's not an issue at all. All right, so we're just going to go through here, double check, check if there's anything else uh, that's important that we talk about. Nothing in here. Nothing in here. Uh, find idle villagers. All right, this is a really important hotkey. We're going to talk about this in the game that we play. Uh, so you, these uh, controls, you can customize them around a little bit. I've got them set up uh, the way that I like. So, so you can see that I don't have find town center or capital. So this is set as a default as of control S, uh, but I like my stable as control S instead of having it on control F. Uh, and so, or oh, sorry, I think it's the default was control D. Uh, so I bring my stable into control S and my foundry instead of control F to control D. Just brings it in a little bit closer, makes it easier to click. The other ones, they don't matter too much, but that one's quite important. Uh, it's important to, to memorize these controls. So as an example, control Y is your church. This has probably taken me about 50 games in the Definitive Edition to actually memorize because uh, I keep trying to use the legacy key to find my church and I just simply can't find it. Uh, so I think that's all we really need to look at. All right. There's also some more down here. I don't really... Uh, these, these aren't things that I use. Um, now, when it comes to the game world hotkey, so moving your camera uh, left and right, they, these aren't things that you're ever really going to be doing. Your right hand, if you're right-handed, is going to be on your mouse. Your left hand is going to be on WASD. It's never going to be moving off WASD. It's always going to be in that area. So th these keys just really, you know, un unless you're, you're making some sort of machinima, they're, they're not really going to be of use to you. Uh, obviously, if, you, if you're left-handed, then vice versa. You'd be using your left hand and your right hand would be on WASD. Uh, let's keep going. Selection group hotkeys. So these ones can all be uh, set to default. And the next one is command hotkey. So this is a really, really important one. Eject units. I think the default for this uh, that the game comes with is, is control alt P or something ridiculous. So we're just going to change it to G. Make sure that we've got allow conflicts on G. So this is the button that's going to enable us when our villagers garrison inside of a town center, we're going to be able to eject them nice and quickly. Uh, and then we've also got the toggle auto repair. We're setting this to H as well. So it's our repair button. Uh, so let's jump into a game. We're going to go through a couple of different hotkeys and what they look like. Uh, we're just going to play with the French and we're going to go on Florida because I find it the most aesthetically pleasing map. We're going to have all the graphics turned up. So if you've watched my graphics video, don't be uh, don't be ashamed uh, to see my foliage going. So, oh, I, I should probably shout out. The, so, at the very beginning, I've I've already used my hotkeys uh, without even really realizing. So, I've selected my explorer and I've pressed W. So, W you can see down here. This corresponds with my keyboard. In in the legacy, th these all have individual uh, keystrokes. Okay, so a town center has a, a keystroke of Q on the Explorer, but in on the uh, Courier de Bois, it has a a, uh, a hotkey of B. So in, in the original, 
it, that wouldn't have been the case. It would have been the exact same hotkey. Oh. But I know... So the, the the reason why I advocate to use the uh, the new hotkeys, so I think they're called default, is because I know that whenever I click on my explorer like that, each one of these actions that he's got corresponds with a key on my on my keyboard. No matter what unit I touch, I can know if I need to look down there what key I need to press at, at the touch of a button. So one of the big things that you're going to be doing with your explorer is you're going to be putting him in melee a lot. You're going to need him to shoot and then you're going to need him to be in melee because he's going to need to slow. And so you can do that just by pressing C on your keyboard. There you go. Uh, and then pressing uh, Z to returning back. I, I, I was, I'm able to do this so fast that when you're, you're clicking a unit, so you can just simply click and then just turn it to... Uh, to melee instantly. It works incredibly well if you've got a pikeman with cover mode because the town center starts shooting it and you just instantly turn it into into cover mode. There's no mucking around. You don't have to click UI elements. You just instantly hit that button. And so that's that's why I'm I'm such a big advocate of the uh, the settings. Uh, so the the newer settings because I know that just looking at my UI, what I can build. So that, that was just me hitting W, me hitting Q. Now, Legacy's got the same thing, but where this gets different is... Le so I'm building a market here. I know that we've already got one, two markets. So that's a, a really... Uh, that's a traditional strategy. It comes in from the original. So I can now use my hotkeys. So Control Q would take me to a house. Control W takes me to a market. The more, the merrier. So... It, it gets better there from there. So let's let's say I'm over here and I'm, I'm chopping wood, but it's not coming fast enough. All I do, control W, W. That's it. I just research, I'm researching my wood upgrade just by doing that. Control W, Q. There, put it in hunting, hunting dogs, goes in. Every single building in the game, Q, 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 Q. It, every single action in the game over here. Look, there you go, research. That's A. I can just simply know it, what I'm, I want to do without having to click and without ne needing to know what the shortcut is. The original, you had sh uh, you had shortcuts for absolutely everything, but they were all over your keyboard. Here, they're all centralized over that WASD, and that's really what makes these hotkeys so powerful. Go so, on. next thing in. So, we're going to be looking at uh, the... Um, the garrison feature. So this is something that you're going to be using a lot. So you, you've got villagers over here. They're they're mining or they're chopping their wood, uh, and your your age up's just about to finish. You're about to hit age two. You want to get them over here. So you've got villagers. So we're going to send these ones into the town center, and we're going to send these two to the coin mine. And we're going to have a look what happens. So these ones go to the coin mine. All right, they got, they got too much of a head start there. We, we might give them a control group. So. That's control one, this is control two, all right? So, one, two. And then we're tapping G, look at that. Look at that extra speed that you're getting. It's not a lot, but hey, look, they're getting in one, two, and they're just starting. That's that's coin that you're building. That that could be the difference between being able to call Minutemen and not being able to call Minutemen. You watch that recent Inca video that I did, you saw how fast those, ba those bad boys got in there. That could be the difference between you having coin to call Minutemen and not being able to call Minutemen. So it's just important that you try and min-max every aspect of the game that you can. So another thing uh, that you're going to be doing with the, with the new system is so your keys... Uh, on the keyboard, they're, they're corresponding to the building. So you've got A uh, for the trading post, you've got S for the wall, D f and, and so on and so forth. So to, to build an artillery foundry, you've got to go all the way out to H. Now you have to be really, really careful with what the default keys are. So I, I think I might have turned mine off, but the next key on the keyboard is J. And what J corresponds to is your third command button. So command buttons are down here. And that's what J does. J deletes a villager. So if you've ever accidentally deleted a villager and wondered, how did I delete that villager? I didn't click on the delete button. I was nowhere near it. And you, I just deleted it. That's because you hit J. So it's turned on by default. And the reason why is because there's a lot of units that actually do make use of it. So you've got auto scout here. Uh, please don't use this this setting. This isn't a, a good setting. It's, it's wonderful for the campaign. It's not so good in competitive PvP. Make sure you keep that one off. So you do have buildings that have got the this button. So... Here, it's it's eject. So there you go, J and G work. But uh, my uh, in, what I'm going to encourage people to do is to disable it, just simply because so often 
you know, you're going to be wanting to put down the building that's on your G key and you'll reach over for it and you'll reach just a little bit too far and oops, there, there he goes again, he's been deleted. So that is, uh, it's, it's a really important thing that you, you want to change. So to change that, uh, if I remember correctly, it's going to be down the bottom here. So we've got command, so in command panel hotkeys, and there you see command button three. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that and we're going to unbind it. All right, and then we're going to save key bindings. And now hopefully, once we've applied those changes and we go through, I'm going to uh, build my artillery foundry very loudly so you guys can hear it. And then I'm going to accidentally hit, hit J instead. Doing nothing. And it's looking beautiful. I'm never going to delete another settler accidentally doing that. All right, so next thing on the list, what have we got? Uh, we, we've gone through eject units, so toggle auto repair. So I, I'm not too sure exactly why it's called auto repair now and just not repair. Uh, so essentially when your units or when your building is being sieged, it just enables you to just simply press G and and once uh, and to regain its health once you've got enough wood and once it's um, gone past the, the delay timer on it. So that's an important one. You can just simply click the UI. It's really not a big deal. You're not going to be repairing a lot of buildings. So we can now talk a little bit more broadly about hotkeys uh, and, and the way that you're going to be using them and the best way that you're going to, to use them. So the very first thing uh, that you're probably going to be doing with control groups in the game, so control groups are a form of hotkeys, is by giving your explorer a control group. So to do this, what you're going to do is select your explorer and you're just going to press control one. It's going to leave this little flag up here in the top corner and you're going to be able to uh, to come back to it. So there's there's a few different ways that you can come back to it. So let's say we're over here on the town center number five and our explorer, we can see him on the map, but we want to go have a look at him right now. We can press the number one key twice and it's going to snap us to the explorer. It's going to take us directly over here. We can actually follow him just by continually pressing one if you want. I, I, I can't remember the last time I did this, uh, but uh, you know it's it's there as an option. So when you've got your hotkeys, you can just simply select the explorer just by pressing one. So you can be over here. Let's say, oh, you you know, okay, that, that's that's probably a bad idea, or a bad example of a treasure, but you could be like, oh, I want it, I want my explorer to come over here, and just simply press one and just right click. That's going to send the command. You've selected the explorer. You can see him on the minimap, and now he's walking this way. So that's that's a really important thing. Uh, so the, the, the hotkeys that I'm normally using, at least in the beginning of the game, is one for my explorer. Uh, I'm going to use two for my scouting unit, if I've got a scouting unit. So I, I should have spawned with a French scout, but I don't know where he's gone. Uh, he's probably had a bit of a run. Oh, there he is. So I'll normally put him as two and, and send him for a run around the map like that. If I want to snap back to him, I can just do that. It's rare that you snap to a, to a scout, um, but... You can see the, the possibilities there. And then uh, five with the, for the town center. And so the reason why it's five is because you are going to end up being uh, putting buildings and units on three and four. And so five is a number that's still within reach of, for your hand. You don't have to move the base of your hand to reach five. If you want to snap to your town center, you can still press five very easily. So there you can see my scout has died, unfortunately. And I was able to snap to him. I heard the sound. I saw on the map that he was under attack and just immediately I just hit 2-2 two, two, and I'm straight down there. I know exactly what's going on. I see everything. I see the enemy was building cannons. I saw a whole bunch of units here. So I know he's not, uh, I know he's not AFK and I can see he's Dutch. So control groups are uh, really important. Um, 5Q. So, you know, often you'll... You might see me in a game, so let, let's say I'm microing a, a treasure, and so we'll, we'll snipe. Oh, I've got him in melee. That's, that's probably a bad idea. So you can see my explorer here. What I'm going to do is I, I might need to train a villager. So I'm just going to press 5, Q. I can still continue doing what I'm doing over here throw in another hotkey as well so it, it just enables me by having this control group i don't have to go up to here click on that come back down shoot again i'm i'm just simply able to do that just by pressing 5q and then back to one it, it just enables a, a very very smooth transition 
when when you're doing things like this when you when you're enforcing timings so then the next one is for uh idle vills now idle vills have changed a little bit so in the original game let's say you've got a whole bunch of of vills here oh, pro this is probably a better example even though these guys might take a, a little bit longer all right so these guys are all going to gather this sheep all of them they're going to gather it nice and quickly but when they get to the end of it they're going to be idle and i'm going to be over here and i'm going to be busy so you can see now i've got eight idle vills so what i would do is i would press the shift button and I would click that. But the problem is, I've only selected one villager. So, what what's happened? So, th that was something that was very regular. People would do that. They normally wouldn't use a hotkey to find idle villagers. Because it was, uh, you know, really wasn't necessary. You could just go shift and click. And you'd select all eight. And then you'd be like, alright, just gather the coin. So, th the problem is with the DA at the moment, that's bugged. Or it, it's uh, it's been changed. And you can't do it. You can only select your, your settlers individually. And you can see it's, it's only selecting the first one. So the way that I'm currently finding idols and the w way that I found the best is through using the hot key. So it's the tilde key. It's the, the key that's next to your one that's on the other side of the two. So that key, what it's going to enable you to do. So let's say I'm over here. I'm, I'm fighting this guy. Get out of here, buddy. Oh, I've got idols. I'm going to press that tilde key. And I'm going to click, tilt, click, tilt, click. Just like that. And that's going to get rid of all my idols immediately. I'm just hitting that button and I'm clicking. Hit that button, clicking. And it really helps when they're all grouped together like this. If you've got an idol that's down here, an idol that's over there, you know, sometimes you, when it comes to, to the late game, you don't really care what your villagers are on. Like, you've got a rough idea, like I want 40 on food, I want 30 on coin, and I want 10 on, on wood. And... You know, there might not be anything in the area or you're in the middle of a fight or something's going on. So you're just going to hit that button and you're just going to click. And you're going to click, 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 click. And then you're going to grab both of those and then hit that, that tilt again. And you just, all you want to do is get them out of here. Get them out. I don't, I don't, okay, that tree just disappeared. I don't want to, you know, see idols down here. I want to make sure all my vills are working. And that's the most efficient way to do it that I've found so far. Just simply because that shift uh, tilt has been disabled. So the next big one is attack move. So attack move is an absolute imperative that you need to be using. So there's only really one use for attack move. So often people, so let, let's get an army together. So it's, we're in, uh, we're in deathmatch at the moment. So here's a little deck I prepared earlier. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a nice little army together. Uh, we might get the, the church so that we can train our stuff faster. Uh, you don't need to build that. Alright, and so what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to go through uh, attack move and why it's... Uh, or, and, and how to use it. What's going on? Have I got I've got an idol in my TC this whole time. I was trying to work out what was making that sound. Uh, so for these ones, I, I, I find that I click these ones because it's too far and I can't actually tell what key they're on. It's like, all right, they're over on the side. So I it's a H, I know that. But it's like when, when you're opening it up and you're in the moment, often you just find it's easier to click it like that. Uh, and uh, you can see I'm, I'm putting down factories. I don't even have to think about it. I just know I... I Drag that box, I hit Q, and I put that factory down. Alright, so let's get some of these bad boys out. We're going to get a whole bunch of skirms out. Uh, and the reason why is because of the way that skirms work. So, one of the key things, uh, and I'm going to be going over this more in, in the micro guide, uh, but one of the key things that you want to avoid doing with, with skirmishes or any ranged unit is overkilling. So you don't need to be killing them, your, the enemy with, with all 50 skirmishes. You're able to do this just by uh, using a, a small amount. So uh, just as an example, in the early game, if you're playing Dutch, what you will find is that your five skirmishes do enough damage to kill a musketeer. So when you're shooting an enemy musketeer, you don't want to just right click that musketeer if you've got 20 skirmishes. You want to be attack moving them. That way you can maximize the damage that they're going to be doing. Alright, how are we doing here? So we got 20 skirms at the moment. We might upgrade them to guard as well, just because the enemy's going to have guard skirms as well soon. Alright, 
So now we've got 50 skirms. We're going to take it down with our... With our dragoons. And we're going to have a look at... So... Here you can see, by using attack move, my village, uh, my uh, the villagers were both were targeted by multiple skirmishes. They didn't all focus fire like this. They didn't have 50 skirms all firing. What you do, so you press Z and then you just move your skirmishers. They're going to attack the closest unit. So you can go... There's different ways that you can do it. You can just grab a portion. If you've got one that's, that's closer and you don't want them to overkill. Here, I'm going to grab... And so Z and oh here's a perfect example when that column's marching at you. Look at that, just take them all out. That one in the front's gonna soak though. So here we want to try and clear that that very front one out. That, that's what I'm doing with that that micro because otherwise they're just gonna focus it like that. And we're attack moving the whole time. We're just attack moving back. We're focusing that Swiss pike or that cannon. So here, an another great thing about the hotkeys, um, and this is something that I'm going to be going over in, in micro, is it enables you to change stances very quickly. So stance changing is a, a really, really important part of the definitive edition. And the reason why is, so that cannon there, when you, when, if you look at all my units right here, they're very, very closely packed together. If a cannonball comes in here, it's going to absolutely shred through. Now, your first thought might be, all right, well, let's put them on stagger mode. I've got a big brain, I'll do that. Problem is, when you select a, a unit number like 45, it's actually going to bring them all closer together. So we've actually got nowhere to run here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of sneaky mic. Going to need to take out that, that cannon. So you need to ship them into, you need to move them into smaller groups. That's essentially the way that it works. And by moving them into smaller groups, what that's going to do is it's going to change the way that stagger works. So stagger with a, a higher number of units, it, it pushes them all together. But when you grab a, a unit number like 20 and you stagger them, it's going to push them all out. So the moment I saw that cannon, my first reaction was I need to stagger. But when you've got 50 selected, you can't do that. So we're just going to go back into normal. And we're going to go through what, what the mindset is when you're up against that and how hotkeys can, can really help you the moment that you see cannons. So here, again, just, just microing away. We want to take out that front one because it's really close. So you want to take out that close one, otherwise they're all going to just simply fire at that, that very front one. You want to get that nice even spread in. So you can see right now, if you can, uh, if you can make it so that your skirmishes are firing at different times as well, it's really going to increase the efficiency of, of fighting with your skirmishes as well. Uh, one of the ways that I do that, so uh, uh, with the example that I used earlier, so let's say early game and you've got a whole bunch of uh, of skirmishes. Let's we'll grab twenty because uh, that, that's the the magic number. So we'll grab twenty skirmishes. And you're up against musketeers. Let's say it's a team game. So you're going skirmishes and uh, and muskets and hussars on your team. And you're the one in charge of the skirmishes because you're playing Dutch. And the enemy composition, they've got muskets. You check the HP. They haven't sent any team uh, infantry hit points yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your skirmishers into group one. So bring him over here. Group two, which is five skirmishers as well. Group three, which is another five skirmishes and group four and so you're going to bring them all together and then you're going to go you're looking for those engagements and from there that enables you to effectively micro individual units just by using the hotkey so you go one two three four like that one two three four so I, I've, I've just snapped to them unintentionally it enables you to pick off those units with your control groups okay hussar now we've got a problem because we we have uh, we've taken off our hotkey for our goons so that that's essentially what i uh wanted to demonstrate when it came to the way that a control group can be used with micro uh normally it's rare that you're going to be using hotkeys uh nine eight seven six there are people who do use them uh but because they're so far away on the keyboard you can't reliably be hitting these on your keyboard without looking at the keyboard that's unless you're some sort of mechanical god um but 
ideally you're just going to be using one two three four five and maybe six sometimes uh my, my primary go-to is is going to be my skirmisher units oh i, I can't do this uh, so it's going to be my skirmisher units on control one my dragoon units on control two and on control three i'm going to have my artillery now this changes if I've got Hussars. If I've got Hussars, it's Control 1 for Skirmishers, Control 2 for Hussars, and then Control 3 for Dragoons. So each person's got their own little way of, of doing it. That's that's normally the way that I do it though. So I know that whenever I, I press 1, I'm always going to be snapping to my ranged infantry. And now so you can see we've got some idle vills. I might just show off a little bit with my... There you go. Look at that. Check that out. We're going to just move these guys to wood. Too easy. And we're almost down to zero. I wish it snapped to the uh, the ones like all, all within an area or it did like a clockwise loop, but it just seems to be all over the place and we've, we've still got an idle. And another important one is F2. F2 is a hot key that's only been added in the definitive edition. So F2 is going to send you to your home city. And it's going to send you to your home city really quickly. You're not going to have to go down there, misclick, oh fuck, and then click. You're just going to simply press F2, and that's going to take you to your home city. There's no thinking about it. It's just nice and easy. You're here. You're fighting. You're in the midst of battle. Let's let's go do it. And we're going to send four courier de bars while we're in battle. We've got... And then we're just going to hit F2, four courier de bars, and then back out. And we're still able to micro. We've got that shipment in. It's important we get those four courier de bars in. Very important. And F2's just done that. Now, there's a couple of other F keys that, they're, uh, that they've included. So, you've got F1, which, if I remember correctly, is the town center. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm open to whether people want to continue using Control 5 for their town center. Or whether they just want to use F1. F1 seems fine to me. Uh, the only thing is uh, to note is that when you do use F1, you're going to be moving your hand to a position that's not optimal for pressing Q. So, if you're following it up with a Q... It's, it's going to be a little bit harder. The other thing is, that when, with, when you're hitting F1, you're only going to be selecting one town center. So if we build a whole bunch of town centers... Oh, that turkey. It's a, it's a foundation dance party. Alright, so we're going to have to wait for these town centers to go up. But if you're pressing F1, you're only going to be selecting one town center. Whereas, Control 5, I can put all three on there. Uh, and so let's have a look. Those town centers going up. So we're going to stop production of Corridor Bars. Alright, so we've got two town centers up now. There's a second one, and the third one should be coming up just here. They ta they're taking their time. There's only seven of them, that's why. Alright, so when I'm fighting. All I need to do to queue settlers, because I can see that I've got none producing, is just hit 5Q and then I'm straight back. And that trains three settlers. But if I'm using F1, I can't control how many town centers I've, I've got. I'm, I'm going to have to, so let's cancel all those. And we're in the middle of fighting. We've got our, our skirmishers and our dragoons down here fighting. F1, Q, F1, Q, F1, Q. It's possible, but it's a lot slower. And then back down. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if, if you got good enough at it, you probably wouldn't notice an impact if you, if you just... Like that. What's this guy doing, mate? Is that an artillery foundry? A barracks going down right outside my coin mine? Burn it down. So here, stagger. Look at that. Immediately staggers. So it means that when this when these cannons hit us, we're gonna be perfectly staggered. That's just a, that's only one unit. We just lost one unit there. Barely even a scratch, mate. Just one unit going down. Imagine if they were all tight together like this. How much more damage that's gonna be doing. As soon as we see those falconets, we just instantly hit W, and it's just that easy. You don't have to click down here. Alright, double checking, we haven't missed anything further. Uh, for, the, for the people who aren't subscribed, you might want to put a hot key on this one here. Uh, just because you're probably going to be needing it a lot more. If, if, you, uh, if you do subscribe though, I encourage you... Probably don't want to. Probably don't want to use a hotkey on that. You're not going to be needing that one a lot. Uh, all right. Other than that, guys, I think we've covered ab absolutely everything. Uh, if you do think I've missed something, please leave a comment down in uh, underneath the video, 
and I'll make sure that I get to it. But you can really see with the default key bindings, they're just incredibly versatile. You can just simply snap to any building and you can, you know, if you know where it's positioned in your head, you know the button that you've got to press to research it. Like right now, if I want to research veteran pikemen, all I have to do is press control A and then hit A. That's it. Like I'm going to just do it right now. Control A is my barracks and A is the second row. It's the first thing. Control A, A. That's a crossbow. That's that's awfully awkward. Uh, but you understand exactly where I'm coming from. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope that you've been able to take something away from this. And thank you very much for watching.